Christina, how are you? Thanks. Have a seat. Um, works with Kathleen. Uh, can you give us a little bit of background in what you would like to accomplish here? Well, Christina came to the piano as a beginning adult. Okay. And uh, her first teacher was Brenna, and her second was me, so she's only known the Talbot work. And um, what we go back and forth with in her technique now is tightness. Um, she knows she knows the motions, but there's there's a control to the key um, that I'd like you to, to work with today yeah. if you can. Maybe if you can address people. Um, yeah. She controls the drop instead of just letting it drop, and then sometimes the fingers still take over because um, I think she has very strong hands and she's used to doing a lot of things with those hands. She's a gardener among other things, and it's hard to let her just yield that control to her arm. Mm -hmm. Did I say that okay? Yes, I'm also a graphic artist, so I'm always at the computer, and I think that really works mm -hmm. on my control issue in, in a negative way. I see, okay. And um, in, in your um, work together, uh, what has your approach been in terms of what have you shown, what have you done together in terms of the technique? Uh, we've done all the aspects of the technique, at least in scales and arpeggios. Um, note reading had to be addressed, so the, I'd say the scale's on a higher level than when we play pieces because of the note reading. And um, I'd like to see if you can take Christina to the next level in terms of letting this be her technique that can serve the music instead of um, us, we have to go back sometimes and, and get it to be free at the beginning of a lesson because it doesn't come in that way. Okay, so can I ask a few, a few <laughs> questions? So, what, so um, clear, clearly, and I, I know Kathleen's work and stuff, and I know that, that you've been very uh, dedicated for a long time. Mm -hmm. What can I provide that would clear up this the issue of the freedom, because you seem to be very articulate about, you know, you're at the computer, you're doing this, it's, you know, you use your hands, you, like, that's, that's clear. And I'm, I'm suspecting that you've felt freedom, mm -hmm. like, it's just, it's, but it's, it seems to be maybe not always available, is that what we're talking about? Like, you don't always, ha it's not always, so is it something you realize, like, say you've been playing a few minutes and then you realize, oh, I guess I'm not as free as I would like to be, or is it, Yes. Are you trap you you do so you, yes okay all right so let's let let let's zero in on that experience so that happens okay and so what's your next move um, to get tighter <laughs> to get tighter well I'll, I'll find myself doing this kind of thing really hard and then I realize oh my god and I try to make it lighter but then it becomes even more controlled can somebody open I the back see. door please <laughs> okay. And when you when you use the word controlled, can you can you I can show you. you? You can show me, okay, but what does it, I just want to know what it means to you. What does I'm it mean? I'm making sure be that controlled? finger hits the, the right key. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. All right, great. So here's here's my invitation to you. Okay? It is perfectly right. In fact, I encourage you to play a lot of wrong notes today. Okay. Okay? <laughs> I want I want to hear wrong notes everywhere. I okay. love wrong notes. Okay. okay. Because if you don't, if you don't allow that piece to come in, this is a very common thing. Did you have piano lessons as a child? Maybe for a month or two, but that was it. Hmm. Okay. But there, there is a notion. I've dealt with this with people that you have, you have, What you want to get just appreciate is that that sometimes we we create an idea of what it means to do well at something. Right. Okay. Now it could be that playing the right notes is a very high priority in terms of the overall sense of whether I'm doing this well or not. Okay, mm -hmm. but, you but you have to maybe consider this, just I'm asking you to consider it, mm -hmm. that that's exactly what's at play here that doesn't allow you to get what you really want to get. My perfectionist nature. Got it, okay, <laughs> great. So you have to be willing to miss. Okay, mm -hmm. look, I'll illustrate it very clearly for you and you'll see it. I'm very clear, I'm very clear, that if I wanted to be a basketball player, that what I would do is I would get 6,000 sheets of paper, 
I would crumble them up and I would throw them into a waste paper basket. Okay? <coughs> By the end of the 6,000 sheets of paper, I would be a better player, a better basketball shooter than I was at the beginning. But if a coach who coached basketball came and watched me do it, they'd have a lot to say with what I'm doing wrong. Mm -hmm. okay? So the point here is we have to embrace the, the things that, of the technique that change the feeling. Okay, so we have to figure out what it is that you do that creates all this tension, because there's it's not just the thinking. But if you don't allow yourself to let go of the idea that you have to play the right note, mm -hmm. it's like me trying to learn to throw better by holding the paper all the way to the basket. Exactly. You know, exactly. there's no throw. There's no nothing. I'm not developing anything. I might even end up with a basket full of paper, but I have nothing in terms of the skill of throwing. A basketball because it requires me to let go of a ball okay there is an aspect here of aiming mm -hmm. for the good or bad of it you just have to aim and let it go okay. you know so that that is very crucial the objective here is very very crucial to the success if the objective is to play the right note no matter how you're shown to do something your body will not let go into it because it has this other predominant structure of playing the right note so we're not going to play any right notes. We just have to set that as the ground rule. No, doesn't matter. I don't care. There are no points for playing good right notes. Okay? What we are going to do is have certain physical experiences that land in particular places. Okay. Okay? Let's set the context for this. Great. So what we, you have the structures in place. You have five fingers. You have an arpeggio involved. I would like to start with an arpeggio. So now I have to see what you do physically so that we can... Can Pick a place. Here? You're great. Okay. okay, so can you show me an arpeggio? Can you actually start from the top and go down first, please? Great. Okay. It's not so bad. It's good. I know what you're talking about, though. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very okay. controlled. Okay. Do it one more time. I just want you to feel a little bit. Okay, great. All right, so here, so here, in, so let's talk about what the exact consequence of the thinking of making sure you play the right note is. Okay, can I sit here for just one moment? So the exact consequence is, even though you know to do this, your body doesn't doesn't do this. You're pretty good here. You go like this. You actually stay the perfect amount of time, which is very difficult. That's mostly what we correct in people. You stay the perfect amount of time, and then you just shift over here, yeah. and then you make sure you're going to shift. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something that you know to do, but is very illogical. But it's you're, it's not in the theory that you're 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 hung up. It's not that you don't know to do this. But I need to, we need to presence what's happening and what isn't happening. There's no preparatory motion which gets you here. Because I have this feeling that physically it's too vulnerable to go over there when the idea is to make sure you're going to get to the E. Mm -hmm. Can you let yourself go that way? It's, it's seemingly illogical, but let's see if we can do it. Okay. okay. Very good. No, no, I, I, all right. <laughs> but very, very good, right? Excellent. I'm glad that happened. I'm very glad that happened. All right. If you trust me, and I promise you, you'll have a great experience. Okay. Okay. Great. Five to three. Okay. Great. Now follow me. That's it. That. Yeah. Follow me. Mm -hmm. Just hang out here. It's not such a bad place, right? <laughs> okay. Great. Now we're just gonna take. We're gonna throw the paper in the basket. Okay. Go ahead. That's it. Okay. Great. Let's go back. Very good. You're not going to let go of this guy. You're going to hold on. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Go. Now, throw. That's it. Turn. Throw. Very nice. Can we do that again? Mm -hmm. Very good. Turn. Throw. Throw. Very mm -hmm. nice. Very nice. We're going to do it again. Okay, 
What's different about this in your experience? Um, it's a lot of a lot more rotation than I'm used to. I, uh -huh. I, whenever I hear double, when yes. you go to here, yes. and this is a double, yes. I, I'm, Kathleen and I struggle with this because I always just want to do what I did. Yes. Because like, what what is a double? Is it is it the whole hand? Is it the finger? Very good. It's an excellent question. I appreciate that question. To answer your question directly, yes, it is the finger, hand, and arm as a unit turning opposite to where you're eventually going. Mm -hmm. Okay? It, yeah. Okay, so I'm doing this unminimalized so that I can get there, right? Yes. But minimalized would be a lot smaller. So that's where I get confused. Absolutely. So this is, this is so common because so many people have this, this, this thing. It's that duality between something that's too big and then becomes so small it's non-existent. <laughs> there is a little bit of a gray area between that we have to, we have to create, okay? So the gray area is to help you when you're with yourself. So when you're with yourself, you have to ask this question mm -hmm. and answer this question for yourself. I want to do it in the size that I know I'm doing it. I want to do it in the size that I know I'm doing it. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So, in other words, what does that help us do? It helps us not do it larger than we need, but it raises it to the point where it's not something that becomes so easily erased. See, there's, there's a predominant idea here of, like, you, you don't fully maybe um, understand, which is totally fine, by the way, the you, why do we need this thing called the double rotation? Mm -hmm. it's not and, if it, and, if, and if it's minimalized, how do I know I'm even doing it? Absolutely. This, but I have to tell you, every, a pianist at every level has these same questions. This is not unique to, to your experience or indicative of because you started a little bit later than some other people. Everybody has these questions, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy they come up because I can tell you, you can know people teach all kinds of levels of people, and I bet you you won't find one person there who's not dealing with this issue, right? Is this a common issue? It's the, the duality between too big and then, then non-existent. Okay, great. So this is, a, this is a, um, best dealt with in gradation, okay? I don't think it's very helpful to go from huge motion to extremely small. You might take this down a notch. Okay, so sometimes what helps is giving yourself some, de some, some defined things, okay? Mm -hmm. So if I go here, let's say I'm turning and it's exaggerated, okay? Mm -hmm. I would be turning, if I imagined a, a clock, mm -hmm. I would be turning to like two or three o'clock, mm -hmm. okay? Can you turn just till to between 12 and two, 12 and two? That's it. Very good. So make sure you turn between 12 and 2 and now go here. That's it. So if you thought each time you had to turn between 12 and 2, do you think that you could do it, just physically do mm -hmm. it? Let's try that. Fantastic. Okay. Is it, this is so great because I have to tell you, Kathleen, you did a great job here, both of you together. The, the idea that, you're, that she's unified, that these motions are so readily available. But you see, just doing the motion doesn't get it kind of where we need to go. I'm, I'm very um, eager to see that, that what we're doing now is so much more advanced, okay? But yet, the problem with, the wonderful thing about this, this work and this technique, or playing the piano even, I, I hate to even call it a technique because, what is it? It's playing the piano. It's a wonderful thing, and it's a daunting thing. It's very much like an airplane. You have an airplane, all the parts of the airplane have to be constructed well and put together well, right? We don't want to go on a flight, and the person, the attendant, greets us and says, hello, today you're on a flight, the body of the jet is really superb. The wings, <laughs> we have so much time on the wings. And the engine, well, well, the engine's not. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't work, it doesn't give us a lot of security, right? <laughs> now, the problem here is that it doesn't take much of an element to be off 
that the entire plane doesn't fly, see? This is what's so delicate. So what's, what's interesting here is that the, the, the body of the work, of difficult work, she's actually accomplished, you see? But the notion of the, not, the lack of clarity around the double here is not allowing this thing, like you said, to go to the next place. So that small concept that I have to play the right note, do you see what I'm saying? It, 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 it's disproportionate. In other words, the harder work, she's done 80% of the harder work. This is a 3% piece of the whole work, right? But that 3% does not allow it to get from where she is to the next place. So we have to find a way that, that, that resonates for you, mm -hmm. okay? So we have to figure out a game you can get up to mm -hmm. that would have you go home and do this. Yes. Because if I'm a fly on the wall watching you practice, I have to be seeing you do this. In order to go to the next place, there has to be some experience with doing this. Because it does this and then it doesn't do this, and it does this and it doesn't do this. So it's got to stay, you got to get over here in this square. Okay? Can't have both, can't have a foot in this one and a foot in this one, and it's going to go somewhere. You got to get the whole thing into the next place. So let's, so what's a good game for you? You're, you're better at, at you and you than I am at better at you and me. I like the clock thing because that makes me aim for something. Okay, awesome. Let's do that. Okay. All right. So that's pretty great, right? That's all you have to do. That's all you have so, to do. Yeah, so go ahead. Ask anything. So you can actually, when you do a double, you can actually move that much? It feels like a single though when I do that. Yeah, interesting. I'm going to say something. Okay, so this is this pertains to everyone. Okay, it's not personal to you. Okay. Okay. This is an example of doing the double, wondering how it's going to work out. Do you get it? Do you see? It's in the way of doing it. It's not that she can't physically do it. She's doing it, wondering how does this work? How can it work? How does it work? How is it different? It's existential. It's I don't know what it is. It's just, just do it. It's one of those things. It's it's really. Did I overthink it? You could possibly, but I'm just saying, just house yourself right here. You have something fantastic. You're doing it extremely well, okay? Mm -hmm. Think clock and keep doing it. Okay. There's no thinking at this point. Don't double, don't over, um, don't second guess it. That's what I want to say. Don't okay. second guess it. Let Can it we do, let it be, let it be. It's fantastic. Do it again. There you go. Does that illustrate anything, anybody? Questions about this? No questions. Okay. So, Kathleen, is there something else that I can address here? Or because I think this, this hits the central issue here. It's amazing how, how the, it changed. And I didn't realize that that thought could be the derailing factor. Yes, but I also want to acknowledge both of you because I could never do that kind of work if I wasn't standing on the shoulders of all the things that you've accomplished with this. See? So there's, it's, and what I want to say is I really want you to understand that it's not a function of you or you. It's a function of the complexity of the work and how much in the work has to be correct in order for it to work. Do you see what I'm saying? And it's, it's not a very fair system, guys. It is not a very fair system. You go to the store and you have a loaf of bread that costs four fifty, and if you decide that that's worth it, you get four fifty worth of merchandise. You pay four fifty, you receive four fifty worth of merchandise. This system, you put in ninety percent correctly, you do not get a hundred percent result. You don't get even. You get about thirty percent result. Only when you get into the 96, 97, 98 percentile of correctness do you get 100, 150, 100, 200 percent result. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's very difficult sometimes because there isn't a kind of like accomplishment for everything you put in, there's a sense of an accomplishment. There's just pieces for a while. There's pieces that have to come together. And then there's exponential growth. Does that make, does that make sense? So that's why I'm spending so much time on the ba basic things because this foundation is what creates that kind of exponential growth. Otherwise, it's you know s somewhat better maybe, and you're not getting you're not getting out what you're putting into it. I want people to realize that the process is like this. You put a lot in at the beginning. Once that becomes integrated, the 
the whole system changes. Meaning, when you, at first, you could put proportionally 10 correct things in, and you might see one result. Okay? When that starts to integrate and you get momentum, in the phase of momentum, what starts to happen is you put one little thing in and you see an improvement across 10, 15, 20 passages. That's exponential growth. Mm -hmm. So you start to put one small thing in or realize one small thing and suddenly the byproduct of that is far greater than if you had to claw for each of those passages. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so that's the... That's the basis of what she discovered was that skill-based learning is exponential. And otherwise, it's just very linear. All, and what do we have? We have an educational system which is completely linear. You go to a conservatory, you play that jury with those pieces, with that recital, you get your receipt at the end of the thing. What does it say about how much we improved or how much we know about playing the piano any better? We just do those things, those are linear assignments, that if we accomplish those linear assignments, then we get rewarded, okay? This is very different. This is not getting rewarded for you know, the little things, but those things will add up. And then you'll be playing pieces that are so much more difficult than you ever imagined. Mm -hmm. Yes? Now, how does this dovetail with putting her back in front of a score? And how much do you think it would hold for somebody that has trouble reading music? I think you bring out the, the, the inherent challenge. But I think in acknowledging it, then you're going to the situation with that understanding. So you're looking out for it. You know? So I don't, I don't know the exact answer to you know, applying it. I just know that right now, I would sit on the experience until I felt the experience was very automatic. To me, when a person comes into the lesson being able to do it without any correction from me, then I feel that they understand it in their own body. If I have to keep working with it, restore it to where it had been to go forward, then it's, they don't own it yet. So if they don't own it, then there's not much we can do in terms of the application. Yes, I would, Barbara? I would love to see you work with the crossing, but if they don't want to do that, I'm happy to. Would you like to do that? I'll try it. Okay, great. What specifically in the crossing? Um, I, I just I have trouble working with the crossing sometimes in my teaching. So. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. So what they mean is they would like to see you do this and then go from here to here. That's oh. what they're focusing. Yeah. I don't know. She did pretty well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> Can we do it from here? Mm -hmm. Okay, but we'll remember your clock. Okay, so we have the clock. Clock, clock. Very good. Keep going. Excellent. I'm glad this happened. Okay. <laughs> you're such a good sport. I have to tell you, you're so fantastic. Okay. No I just want to use the opportunity to help people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's the only spirit in which I'm saying this. This has happened so often. As a person continues in the passage, the concentration diminishes. Yeah. And it doesn't take that many notes for it to happen. It's astounding. The first two rotations you did were superb. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then something, I don't know, there's an assumption that because I did it twice, it's going to happen by itself. Here's the best advice I can give to you. The more you can get people to realize, this is a note-to-note -note phenomenon. You are being present to what's happening note to note. Nobody, no, nobody taught us to think this way. You know, nobody taught us to think this way. So we develop this idea. The idea is so strong in our brains. Get to the end of the piece. Get to the end of the passage. Don't stop. Oh, we have so much baggage in our thinking. It is, that's what's in the way of just being present. Being present to the moment. Being aware. But that awareness, it's so remarkable. I will sometimes, I will sometimes show somebody something. Sean knows this. And I will purposely leave the room to hear what they do with it. Well, and that's I why can, you're always leaving. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He thought it was some other reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, but here's the thing, I'm not, I, I 
can hear how immediately it goes into another way of thinking when I'm not present. Sometimes it even happens while I'm still in the room. <laughs> so I say to myself, if that's happening while I'm still in the room, what's happening at home? What could possibly be happening at home? See, your biggest ally is harnessing the intelligence of the student you have in front of you. If you can't harness the intelligence of the student in front of you, you will always have the experience that you are pulling, pulling this train across the United States, okay? <laughs> what you want is to hold hands and skip over the finish line together. <laughs> you just, it makes life so much better. <laughs> when you have that kind of partnership, then, then that's what's happening. But it takes a lot of training, it takes a lot of dedication to that end to kind of stay with the person and realize these, this is very common. The person is going to start the passage, and by the end of the passage, they're no longer in that same frame of mind. So take whatever time you need, okay? Mm -hmm. But your focus has to be from note to note. You want to make a perfect rotation using the clock. Let's try that. Okay, so now, if I were a fly on the wall tomorrow, I'd be seeing you do this at home. I would hope so. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, great. Okay. How many people found that useful? Okay, great. Um, how, um, okay, can one or two people just share with me what they, what they got out of it? I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. um, I struggle a lot with the minimizing aspects, um, and it was really helpful to see um, how you talked about that because I get the um, I, I didn't I didn't know how to tell people um, how to go from larger to smaller in a way where they still understood that they were doing it. Like it, it was the the merry-go-round of either it's huge or it vanishes, and then mm -hmm. the next lesson I have to make it big, and then it okay. kind of, and then, yeah. Fantastic, that's great. Okay. Anybody get anything different than that? Yes? Just that amazing process of handing over the trust, or allowing the students to just really trust themselves. I think that's incredibly profound, incredibly mm. rare. And mm. so this, to see that happen in a really upbeat, a way that there's this emotional engagement, you know that something's landed, mm -hmm. and that's where the learning, like you said, the exponential possibility there. Mm -hmm. To be able to hone in and like have the vision to see that happen more than not, to have that be a goal of the, the process. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. It takes that's... it to such a different level. It's another game. Right. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, I'm thinking of it like a game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah th but I got that from, completely from Taubman. Talman, we could be, so much of what Talman, uh, the profound things that she said, she would say very much in conversation. It wasn't like she would sit you down and say, I want you to understand this. She would just talk. And if you listened, you really gained things. And she used to say, you know, she said, oh, my, my little kids, they used to love to do the rotation. Oh, the single and the double. And, I, and, they, uh, and Harry, Harry would have to pull them out of the piano from underneath. They didn't want to leave the lesson. And I thought... This is incredible. Like, <laughs> who wakes up in the morning like this? What is she on? But I thought, I want some of that because that's not what I'm experiencing. So it helped me to open up to the idea that A, it could be fun. She was fun. She made it fun. And that she could so love those kids to the point where they loved her back, they would do whatever she wanted. And she had excellent intention. So that the trust has to come, of course, because not because you want to get somebody into some rigorous thing that never ends, but because we want to get them playing. I mean, that's the object, you know, is to get them into playing. But the fun thing, I definitely got from her by listening to her and her describing her process of teaching young children. It's amazing. Okay. Yes, Darren. And also, uh, when you gave her a specific point to uh, prepare or to release, I think... This, uh, this worked perfectly, like 
Ah. It was uh, like from 12 to 2. <laughs> I think it's, it worked really amazing. Yes. The minute she kno knew how much she needs to do, just she did it exactly. Yes. Okay, fantastic. And Darren, I just want to piggyback on that. That speaks to what I was talking last night about the engagement. I'm constantly looking to say, I'm not just saying things, I'm looking to say things that would, the byproduct would be the person's engagement. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the engagement piece is very, very important. Yes, Tony. Uh, I, I thought it was also wonderful that you gave her the permission to play a lot of wrong notes. Because people are very focused, because we are, you know, when you guys demonstrate, if you sort of touch the wrong note while you're showing, you go, oh, excuse me, and then, mm -hmm. you know, you'll do it again. Sure. So we all have that feeling like, well, we have to play all the right notes. And when we realize, well, we can take a chance and play the wrong ones, yeah. it frees you up, I think. It frees you up, yeah. Very important. Yes, Beth? Underneath it, would you say just a continued, um, continued understanding of the double rotation? It really wasn't... You know, I mean, it was clear, but it wasn't necessarily. Yeah, I would actually put, I think it's more nuanced than that. I actually think that the understanding of the double rotation was quite well, well understood. Yeah. The, 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 the actual doing of it and the, the, the purpose of how I get from note to note wasn't completely clear. And the feeling of it wasn't clear because what was in the way was the idea that no matter what the movement is, there's a control to that movement because I have to be on this specific note at that specific time. So that, that kind of cloud, clouded the issue. 